Ah, uh, this goes automatically. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I hope that you're still energetic enough for my session. I am as well, so otherwise you get energetic from me, hopefully. Who recognizes these people? Let me show some hands. Shit. <laughs> it's from a group called Daft Punk. You know it? They made a song about harder, better, faster, stronger. And in that video clip, you see the automation of people, of humans. And it's a pretty old song. So I thought that's a cool title for this show over here. I'll give you some time to read this. Fun at work for, for employees, no matter what kind of employee, manager, leaders, software developers, marketers, customer service employees, doesn't really matter. If they have fun at work, it, it makes them work harder. It makes the software or the product better. It creates value faster and makes the company stronger, right? I want to see some hands again. Who believes in this? And two hands if you really, really believe in this. <laughs> cool. It also works the opposite, right? The way for managers, because managers think if the employees are happy, they will add more value, and then in the end, the results will, results will rise, right? And then they will become happy as well, of course. So fun employees, happy employees, that provide good value, makes happy managers. I'm going to tell a little bit about Agile, but more or less about continuous delivery, and then the organizational part of it, because I think the organizational part of it is often forgotten within companies, right? Because if you don't improve anymore to become better, stronger, faster, people will get bored in your company, right? And they will leave your company, and the company will lose knowledge, etc., etc., etc. That's what I believe in. First, I want to introduce myself. My name is Andy Weiman, working for Eneco at the moment, doing some stuff on my own outside uh, this job to keep myself busy because I have uh, enough energy to keep on pushing in the evening and in the weekend. But the most important thing about this break sheet are the two lines on the bottom. Working with Agile two since 2014, working with continuous delivery since 2015. Today, I'm going to tell you two stories, war stories, about my continuous delivery journey within Ineco. First, some context. Ineco is an energy company, and this was one of the headlines a couple of years back in a newspaper. So this created the urgency for this energy company to become agile, let's say it like that, or start transforming to agile, right? We started in 2014, and in 2019, still going strong. We started small, made a plan, of course made a plan because the board of directors still needed a plan, made some results, scaled Agile throughout the whole company, business, IT, customer services, all the Rattenplan, that's Dutch. And these were the three goals at that moment become a responsive organization. We wanted a shorter time to value. Rini told us a little bit about it, right? Not a shorter time to market, but a shorter time to value. Otherwise, yeah, if you don't make money, your company won't exist. And the last one, become a learning organization. We tried it as well. I'm not telling if we made it, but we tried it as well during that time. After this agile transformation, I say it literally like this. After the agile transformation, I started with continuous delivery. So I was working for two years already within my web department and the app department. I had six teams during that time, and I started to experiment with continuous delivery with all my teams. Pretty cool, right? We were agile after two years. You needed to be agile, right? Other companies do it within one year. We did two years, so we needed to be agile at the moment. 
So I was thinking and dreaming about this red button, right, in the middle of the office. So you had all those six teams sitting around, working, code clopping, right, adding value. And I wanted this big red button in the middle of the office. And when I pressed it, the software went to production, fully tested, et cetera, et cetera, whenever I wanted. Did it made it? Still not. That, that, that's the worst thing I think about my story. I still didn't make it. But I'm going to tell you, because I still believe in this, right? It leads to more fun. Two stories. You can already see about the titles that is a little bit fun in it. The first one, so we implemented Agile after two years. Continuous delivery will follow automatically, right? The second one, we gave you the tools. You is the teams, right? Give us business value and features. Let's start. Team one, to set some context so you understand a little bit more about the situation that they are in. It was the Ineco phone app team. They were, they were working DevOps, so they were responsible for development and operations. Existed out of seven members with the product owner, dedicated, Scrum Master, of course. And they existed already in this form for one and a half years. So that's a pretty long time, pretty stable, right? Actually, they were happy at that moment. I was happy as well. How did we kick off continuous delivery? I think this was also good, right? Because you can start from different angles, right? When do you start with continuous delivery? I can tell you today, if you weren't started already, because otherwise you're too late. We had at that moment, over those teams within the IT department, some flexible consultants. So they weren't sitting in the teams, but they fly over the teams, figuratively, and help them out with continuous delivery implementations. At the same time, all of them. You can imagine this was pretty chaotic. In the end, I had six different pipelines. It's pretty strange from an architectural point of view because they were using the same software, but let's uh, keep it like that. So, what this sales guy from a company promised me when I started with continuous delivery is that I get a team like this, a speedboat, high tech, all, all options on board, right? But in practice, I got this. <laughs> they were still with seven members, but I couldn't find the same picture with seven people in the same boat. But as you could see, there's a quite difference in my approach. So I, I literally, I expected this, I got this. And why? You can imagine. I'll go back with you to this agile transformation, a little bit of a history. At Ineco, we were kind of famous about a maturity model for teams. They could reach the dolphin level, the polar bear level, and the tiger level. We sponsored uh, WNF, that's why the animals. And you see continuous delivery over here. After two years, all the teams reached this one. We can, we can chat about this model later on, but not the other one. But you can see that the focus in this model was only about happiness of teams and product owners. It was on adding value every two weeks. That's the, that's the, uh, the thingy. And in the end, the KPIs, business KPIs, should increase. Nothing was telling about that we helped the teams out to work and perform better. They still got the crappy software, they still got all the legacy systems, crappy CD pipelines, all that kind of stuff, had manual testing, and it didn't help in the end because there was no urgency for those teams to do it better. So actually what I learned from this team or my, my journey was I was measuring the wrong stuff as well. I even had teams within this uh, department that weren't adopting the whole continuous delivery thing or weren't believing in it. Why? No urgency. The learning I want to give with you, I will summarize later on at the end as well, is start measuring code time. Really, hands-on code time. 
every sprint because that will create urgency for your developers for business because what I saw within this team that per, per, per software developer right he was actually coding for only 12 hours straight every sprint the rest of all those hours minus the breaks all that kind of stuff nights of sleep doing fun stuff at home they were busy with meetings testing documentation make aligning with all those other teams business all that kind of stuff this coding time created urgency afterwards after my learning right to do it better because nobody liked this and if i i can tell you something if you start measuring this and you can just ask your team members right by asking how much real code time do you have and they will say eight hours you hire them to develop code not to documentate or do other stuff right remember that as an employee bring this idea up on your team as a manager start testing with it so no red button I was still unhappy team two story two it was a energy trade risk and management uh, support team uh, I got another job within the Nego group so I was uh, responsible in this time for the, the trading department and department that were managing all as type of assets gas assets solar parks uh, wind parks all that kind of stuff all that kind of stuff in the Netherlands also working DevOps eight members existed for 2.5 years pretty stable as well they were contractors happy with us I think and this time I learned from it we built the CD pipeline for them right for them we didn't use their knowledge as well we just built it for them and then said hey these are the tools this is the manual how you should use the tool have fun yeah you can already say no ownership right it's a big joke so what I did this time got the speedboat right picked up that team placed it into the speedboat and tell hey this should be a success right that was my bi biggest assumption and maybe my biggest learning this time as well didn't work out you can already see at the picture doesn't fit right the, 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 this can happen no success I was still unhappy what happened over here I learned from the last time right as a manager I wanted to speed up things because I had urgency. I stepped up to the business. I measured within this energy trade risk management team the code quality. It was actually 10 hours in this team per person, so it was slightly better than in the other team. I measured it, convinced business to do a POC, start small, only one team, right? Start small and learn from it, not with six teams at a time and not with one consultant on six teams. That doesn't work as well. We started, but I forgot something. To, uh, get, uh, to get those team members right out of this team, on the left, this team, to align with the consultants that we hired to come up with this CD pipeline. We thought if we designed it, they weren't interested in the CD pipeline, and then tell them how they should use it, it will all fit out in the end. No, no ownership. The other learning that we've got also over here is when we convinced this team for using CD, we got another problem, the bus business users. Because you're automating as well the tests of the business, right? That's how it should work in the end. So I got this team aligned after several months. They came up with a better CD pipeline ever. So this CD pipeline after this story was worse next time was better but then we stepped up to the business and told them hey we're going to present you give you a presentation about how you can build scripts and use this tooling instead of do all your manual tooling they didn't trust the tooling of course the learning that I've got again was they should be involved as well well I was thinking start small right don't involve get involved with a lot of people but yeah of course I could have asked the whole business to join but maybe I could take some specialists out of the business real experts 
into this POC, proof of concept, and then it will be better in the end, right? I learned twice in the same story. Real, it re uh, really happened. All came well at the end, right? Because I was transparent about my learnings as well, and we kept on learning. So we have success now. So again, continuous delivery. Let's your employees work harder. Why? More code time. Makes your software better. Automated testing is always better than manual testing, right? If you saw some scripts that within companies, they, they, they get 25 pages, for example, out of test scripts, yeah, you can easily forget a step. Software won't forget a step unless you have plugged it like that or programmed it like that. Generates value faster, do it faster, so you can forget that thing. Generate fa uh, value faster and makes the company stronger. Who is a manager over here or has some kind of a role like a manager? Okay, cool. Who's going to start with some stuff that I just told? Monday? Yeah, some hands maybe? Otherwise it wasn't effective, thank you. These are the key takeaways that I want to give you. Right, here they come. Understand that continuous delivery is more than just tooling. It's a mindset. What we did was first agile, then DevOps, then continuous delivery. Wrong. You should do it all at once. Really, if I can give you some advice and you're still not experimenting with Agile within your comp company or you're already busy with Agile, please combine those because it's a change at once. If you do it after each other, you keep on uh, making the same mistake like I did. And for your whole organization, business as well, don't forget that. Focus is needed, measure, start measuring, coding time, code quality, rework, doesn't really matter, measure pain, or let's call it the facts within the teams. Measure, bring it as facts. Why? If you can show your top management that you can increase coding time, more value, yeah, coding time increases, in my opinion, value, because then they can add more features, we can get more money, happy customers, all the time. Start measuring stuff, because there is a business case. Sometimes I have discussions with managers from other companies that they say, Andy, there is no business case behind continuous delivery or IT improvements. There always is. You should measure them, build KPIs. Don't do this when you don't have a solution. Otherwise, you're measuring, you're making stuff transparent, right? And doesn't feel, sometimes transparency doesn't feel happy or comfortable. Make sure that you have a solution. So hire the right consultants, of course. Think about your idea behind it, because you should speed up. You cannot set, tell to a team you only have eight hours of coding time and then wait for three months and then give them the solution, right? They are suffering for three months then, because they know the thing that they like, it's only eight hours per week or sprint. Third one, start small. Involve the right people as well business. Do a pro proof of concept. But also, if you go back with me to the first story, build a blueprint ASAP. Because if you have eight teams, right, and they all have their own ID about building a CD pipeline, you don't want six CD pipelines for your digital environment, right? It's not effective in the end. Then you can start another project program or feature to bring everything together again. Think about the next step, but start small and involve the right people, business as well. Fourth, hire and create specialists that can maintain. In the last story, I forgot that it should be maintained as well within the team, right? Because they couldn't take ownership out of it. They didn't know how it worked. In the end, it should be their CD pipeline, not my pipeline. Don't forget that. Train your own employees. Do that from the beginning. 
and not after a couple of weeks again. And create the vibe, right? Bring it as a show. You usually see that big companies made out of show out of agile transformations. I think a transformation with c continuous delivery with the organizational aspects is as huge as agile as well. And again, it should be part of each other. The last one, teach business and IT how to maintain and to improve the CD pipeline. So people should really understand that CD is not just tooling. It is a mindset. It's, it should be a thing that they could improve as well. Because if you can use it and maintain it, you should be also able to improve it. It's something different than just using it and maintaining it, really. If you have specialists, make them an expert. Train them. It's worth the money, worth the fun. You can make picture if you like, because I'm going to the next sheet. No? And I really, really, really believe, from the bottom of my heart, as a manager, that this leads for more f to more fun for my employees in the teams, but also for myself and also for my top management in the end, if I was doing this right. And I hope really that you had something about this or can use something about those two war stories. But don't forget in the end, it's not a checklist, it's not a plan. You should start playing with this, right? Because uh, who liked uh, playing Angry Birds? Oh, those, those, uh, higher. Yeah, yeah. A lot of group, right? The game, uh, Angry Birds, I liked it because you could keep on trying and, 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 and yeah, uh, uh, shooting the bird. But there's no strategy behind it, right? It's just jump sh shooting. And sometimes you should do that to learn. So don't forget, right? You should overthink stuff. Take all those learnings that I gave you today, and you will probably take away from all the workshops of today. Don't forget you should start and learn. Because otherwise, yeah, you won't end up there. And we all know that playing Angry Birds or games is fun. So keep it fun for yourself. Thank you.